Hi, I think we are all in now. So welcome to the talk. Today we have with us Carol Linskip, taking us down memory lane. So I'll give it over to Gunjan to Gunjan. Hi everybody, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me Nick, should I go on? Yes, please, yes, please, we're good. Okay, I'm having a little bit of bandwidth problems, so I've turned off my video. So Carol needs little introduction to bird watchers of the subcontinent. She's the kindest of souls who has spent over 40 years just loving birds. Together with Richard Krimit and Tim, she has co-authored several field guides on birds of the region covering the subcontinent as a whole, and several dedicated to different parts of the region. For example, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and East Himalaya. Their contribution has changed the landscape of birding in the subcontinent. Together, they are writing a new edition of the field guide to the subcontinent that should be available by 2023. Carol's interests lie in conservation as well, which she strongly advocates to which she has contributed many publications. She has visited India several times, at least 12, but today she is going to take us down the memory lane to the year 1977 when she first visited the subcontinent with her husband, Tim. Over to Carol, thank you. Right. Well, thank you very much, Gunjan, for that very flattering introduction. Hardly, Carol. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for listening. I actually have my husband, Tim, to thank for introducing me to India. He, uh, when I first met him in 1972, he was full of his trip. He had nine months in India and Nepal in 1771. And so within a few weeks, uh, sorry, three months actually. Within three months of us getting married in 1977, we set off overland and we we took public buses. So that's how we got to, to India with a train journey right at the end. Uh, first, we went from London to uh, Northern Greece, Thessalonica. Then we took another bus to Istanbul and as it was early September, it was actually the 5th of September when we left. Early September was a very good time for raptor migration there. And so we spent a few exciting days watch, watching the birds of prey migrating over Istanbul. And then our next leg of the journey was quite difficult. We took um, a long distance bus to Tehran. We had two drivers, it was a long way of course, one was a very old man who looked ever so ill. And when we got to the outskirts of Istanbul, he, he was helped off the bus. So we were left with one driver, one young driver. And uh, I was the only, uh, well, the only Western woman, might have been the only woman on the, on the bus, actually. And this handsome Turk, he was handsome. He, uh, he, he, he had his driving mirror, he moved it so that he could see me. And uh, he kept winking at me when he was driving, maybe to pass the time. And on the latter part of the journey, I forget how far we were from Tehran, but it was some distance. Uh, the road was, it wasn't surfaced, it was just like a gravel road. And unfortunately, this stone broke the window of the bus. So he had one hand holding in the window so it didn't cave in on him. You know, it was a, an old, not like windscreens today. And he is an amazing driver. He steered with his, with his right arm only. So when we got to Tehran rather late, and uh, the last funny thing was that he asked me to go back to Istanbul with him. Uh, so I said no, uh, otherwise my life would have been quite different, wouldn't it? Um, so Tehran, we had to wait three days to get a bus to Afghanistan. Now Tim wanted to spend two weeks there because he did, they'd enjoyed themselves so much on the last trip. So we did. We went to Herat, Kandahar, Kabul, 
and Jalalabad. And I was completely fascinated by Afghanistan. So this was 1977. And we didn't realize, we just didn't realize um, how lucky we were because by 79, uh, you may remember some of you anyway, that the Russians invaded Afghanistan and the journey that we had was no longer possible. But we did have one rather, uh, um, uh, we did have one in, in incident on the, on the way that sticks in my mind. Tim was very keen that we look at the desert birds and uh, we found out there was a hotel in the middle of the desert. It was built by Russians and it was on the road that would be constructed by Russians through Afghanistan and this hotel it was just in a big hotel and I remember it had a swimming pool that was full of stagnant water and there'd obviously been nobody staying there it would just look like almost like it I wouldn't if anybody had stayed there but the uh, hotel owner was delighted to see us he made us take two rooms, not one. And so we went bird watching and we saw a lot of desert birds that day and the following day. And um, I remember it's the first time I'd seen a desert, desert warbler, desert lark, um, CC partridge, um, variable wheat here, Isabelline wheat here. But what we failed to notice that actually we were, the hotel was built right on near an Afghanistan army camp. And of course, um, spending all the day staring through binoculars at the camp, which is what they thought we were doing, was a bit odd. So, and um, that evening, a very smart um, army officer came over. He was actually, we found out after the commander, the commander, you know, and I didn't realize that he was in fact interrogating us, but Tim did. And um, maybe it was my uh, guileless answers to his questions that convinced him that, in fact, we weren't spies and we certainly weren't Russian. But he did advise us that we should get on the first bus the next morning and go on, which we did. Um, and so we, we passed through Afghanistan, um, Pakistan. We went without incident. We got another bus from Jalalabad to Lahore. And then we took a train to Amritsar, and then at last we were in India. And um, I didn't, I'll, I'll just, uh, I didn't write a diary. Uh, I had a notebook, it's still got it, really old, tatty notebook full. And, and that was, uh, got all the birds that we saw, we wrote that together in the evening, where we were. But what I did do is I wrote letters. I wrote letters to my parents every few days. And I, what I found out that my dear mother, after she died, you know, she kept every letter and postcard I'd ever written her. And these are, I, I found them, you know, I, I, I was, it was so moving. These are the 15 letters that I wrote from overland and from India. And they were very long letters some of them uh, like eight sides long and so while i remember the trip you know this this really did take me down memory lane writing um writing about my, my experiences to my mother and um so um i'll just start the slides now um here we go um Yes, there we are. So this is a photograph, as you, I hope you can recognize this. This is Tim and me, uh, taken by his, Tim's mum, uh, just the, the day before we left in um, early, early September. And so, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I didn't take any photographs on that trip. And Tim took some, you know, but, but not very many. And so I'm afraid I've, I've had to resort, um, I've, I've taken uh, a lot of bird images from the oriental bird 
image website and I've given full credit to the photographers. So, I, you know, I do hope they don't mind. Um, so here, here is what I wrote about when we first arrived in Delhi to my parents. We arrived at Delhi station at 6 a.m. And we were met by a friendly, cheerful psych cycle rickshaw owner who pestered us to let him take us to a hotel. So we did, we did uh, relent eventually, and he enthusiastically cycled around, um, showing us all the sights. He gave us bananas. He overcharged us, we later found, by three times. And when we reached uh, this hotel, he vanished. Um, but, uh, and I wrote about the roads in Delhi. I, wrote, I was pleasantly surprised by New Delhi. Huge wide roads, hardly any traffic. Roads lined with trees, beautiful mosques, huge ancient forts and lovely gardens. Um, the people we met when we first arrived, well, throughout our visit, um, if we stopped anywhere, um, a small crowd would gather around us within a few minutes. And uh, that doesn't happen today. So I, I think they must have just maybe not seen many Westerners before. Um, they, were, they were just curious, I suppose. Um, anyway, as soon as we, you know, got, got to the hotel, uh, we went down to the, we went down to the river. And I'll just sh start these bird slides now. Um, yeah, so on the way to the river, uh, over the Red Fort, we were staying very close to the Red Fort. Over, over the Red Fort, there were 30 white rump vultures. Uh, so I was thrilled to see those. But everywhere we went in the plains, uh, as you can imagine, you pretty much always see vultures overhead. And so, uh, of course, you know, very sadly, we, you know, we don't, we don't today. So I think, I think, I think we're re really lucky to be able to experience that. And uh, so we, we walked at just a short distance, actually, to the river and uh, we crossed the bridge and um, there were just so many birds there. I mean, I was, I was, I, I was blown away. You know, there was, um, there was four, Turn species, including ten gullbills, ten river, two black belly, two whisker terns. Um, there was there was uh, quite a number of waders, and uh, I mentioned here there were many waders on the river banks and uh, on mud, mud edged pools by the river, and uh, so th they included river lapwing. Uh, there by the river and and we also saw 30 yellow wagtails and as many as 20 hoopoos and i've written here that we looked in the bushes and gardens along the river bank because we, we luck was with us we were there at migration time and uh, so of course maybe that explains how many birds we saw but i did write to my parents in that first letter from delhi I am truly amazed by the large number and variety of birds in the city and how remarkably and endearingly tame they are. I, I, actually, that, that, that's true t today. I always feel that like wh whenever I go to India, I'm always taken aback um, by just how tame and how diverse the species and how many we see, you know, compared to here in the UK. So some of our most interesting bird watching uh, we did by the river. Uh, and one favorite place uh, was the river near Humayun's tomb. And we had especially good day there on the 28th of September uh, when we had one oriental pratting call and five little. We had two palaces girls. I hope you don't mind me reading out all this long list. Um, and we had four species, the four species of terns again, uh, that we had, we had by the red fort, but this time we had many more. And um, I mentioned the large number of terns darting after shoals of tiny fish that jumped high out of the water like pieces of silver foil. 
and um, we saw as many as as um, a hundred black pellet black pellet terns um, and many river terns, whisker terns, of course, twenty to thirty goldbill terns there there as well, and uh, we had eleven weirder species and. And they were they 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 were feeding. I described the habitat here at near Hugh Mines tomb, the river. I said that there were uh, the turn the waders were on on the uh, river banks, and the, along the river too there was scrub, reeds, and grass. And then behind that uh, there were fields, uh, paddy fields, and uh, sugar crane sugarcane crops and pools. So it's you know, it's quite nice habitat there. But there's one one difference, uh, one drawback with going to India at that time was there was no field guide. Uh, we uh, I had to ask Tim about this the other day, just what field guides did we use? And he said uh, between as we worked out that the only field guides that were available, we must must have had them we, we have them, we must have taken them. There was this Field Guide to Birds of Southeast Asia by Ben King, published in 1975. And then there was a, a good guide for, for Europe, um, published in 72, called Heinzel, Fitter and Parslow. Just about every British bird that had a copy of that in those days. And that covered Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. So not ideal, uh, and also, when we got to the Himalayas, when we got to Darjeeling, we 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 used um, Fleming's the Fleming's Field Guide to the Birds of Nepal. And so, it, it inevitably, you know, we 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 must have missed some birds, I think, uh, be, because we just didn't have the. Um, you know, the field guides. And also, of course, our equipment wasn't anything like as good as today. Our binoculars, I didn't have a scope. Tim had, um, it's like a draw tube scope. Like, it's actually the ones like um, uh, Nelson used at the Battle of Trafalgar in the 19th century when we were battling France. Um, you know, very, very old fashioned. You have to balance it on a, on, a, on a post or lie down and balance it between your legs to see anything out of it. Um, so another really good place um, for us uh, birding was um, yes, that's it, uh, was around the pumping station at Wazirabad. I don't know if you know that. I mean, I haven't been back there um, since those early early days, actually, in the 1980s we went as well. Uh, but I've got here that there were large geals with tall grass and reeds. And there were many waders on uh, sand and mud banks around the pumping station. So um, what did we see? Well, we had uh, we had as many as 14 wader species, and that included a hundred curlew and a thousand ruff. A thousand ruff, many of them in the same flock, actually. Um, huge numbers of terns. Um, I didn't haven't actually given the numbers of those. I think we just didn't have the equipment to properly count them or identify all of them just huge numbers I've written. And um, there were also 400 little pratting coals, which were oh, they're always a delight to see. I can see them now flying around. And 15 palaces gulls, and 15 spoonbills as well. So all that, all that was very exciting. Uh, now one, oh, when we traveled around Delhi, uh, nearly always on tuk-tuks. Sometimes we went in the buses, but I was always uh, afraid a bit alarmed by the buses that I wouldn't be able to get off again once we got on. I uh, preferred the tuk-tuks actually. So I remember going out to the tuk-tuk at 
Kuta Minar and the stony ridge near Tuklakabad. Because when we set off, we had this sheeting, we had terrible rain, sheeting rain, torrential. But anyway, we still, uh, the uh, rickshaw, I mean, the the tuk tuk driver carried on and we got there and it stopped. And so that, well, that was fine. And um, I was I was absolutely fascinated by the by the ruins at uh, at Kutub Minar. Oh, sorry, I forgot this one. How could I forget that when we returned to um, Wazirabad? When we returned to Delhi, we went to Wazirabad again on the twentieth of November, and we had even more birds then. And one of them was an Indian skimmer. So we were both thrilled by that. So I'll just return now to uh, yeah. So so uh, it it was it was a very open area there all, all around Kutabinar and Tuklakabad, and very good for raptors. We had four pallid harriers, and we also had three vulture species. We had red-headed, thirty Egyptian, and fifty white rumps, five black-winged kites as well and black kites of course and the, the, there was a, a small village there called Moroli and uh, the houses the huts there were small huts were all scattered among the ruins there and in the scrub uh, near these these small houses among the ruins we saw um, six yellow-eyed six yellow-eyed babblers and in the open country We had we, we we had a lot of larks. We had um, I just see how many here. Right, yes. So we had fifteen rufous tail lark, fifteen rufous tail larks, which was uh, a new bird, of course, and uh, thirty Indian bush larks, twenty ash crowned sparrow lark, larks. And one particularly bird that we particularly enjoyed, oh, he's the Indian bush larks. Uh, we particularly enjoyed the rufous fronted primias. We had as many as 60, 60 rufous primias uh, on, on the, and near to Klakabad in, in that stony area. And I've done a little description of it, saying it was common in small parties and uh, one of the most more distinctive premiers that I'd seen up to that time. And other birds we had, we had 12 brown rock chats and we had two morphs of variable wheat here. We had one white bellied and one black bellied and desert wheat here as well. Now the reason, the reason Tim and I had, had gone to India was because, because Tim was um, researching the wild bird trade, the international wild bird trade uh, for the RSPB. And I was, I was tagging along really, um, on, you know, on, on, on that trip. So we didn't have any, t had no chance to visit any national parks, unfortunately. And we were, after spending a little while in Delhi, we were told that the main center for the bird trade uh, was Calcutta, the Calcutta bird market. Um, so, so of course we, we, we went there and, and we took the train. Now we, we always, uh, all our long distance journeys, we, we did on the train and, and we always did them. We always went second class. That was, well, I guess the main reason was because we couldn't afford first class, but in any case, the, um, we, we, we did think the first class windows were all dirty. You couldn't bird properly out of them. Whereas the, um, in, in second class, of course, they just had the bars across and it was just, it was just open. And uh, we saw loads of birds on our, uh, on, on our train journeys. And we used to pass the time by counting, by counting the number of birds that we saw, the number of species. And on this particular journey, we set off from Delhi at 8.15 and in the morning. And uh, we were about halfway to Calcutta, we thought, before it got dark. 
And uh, so here's the numbers we total. We had 77 Saris cranes, um, as many as eight, 65 Asian woolly neck, 21 open bill stalks, five black neck stalks. Um, we had a lot of vultures, as you might imagine. We had one red headed, 600 white rums, and we had 80 Egyptian vultures. And, and one of the birds that, that was common uh, wherever, wherever we went in the train journeys was the, the Indian roller. And we counted 32. And uh, both of us have noticed that in India and in, and in the lowlands in Nepal, actually, um, that there seem to be far less smaller numbers of, of rollers nowadays. Don't know if other people have, have noticed that. Um, and, you know, whether there's a smaller number of, of large insects that they feed on or they're direct, are being poisoned directly by pesticide in agricultural areas, we don't know. So when we got to uh, Calcutta, we found people were, were very helpful there. Um, we, we met uh, some, some birds bird dealers there who were, who were very helpful. And we also met uh, a passionate wildlife conservationist. He called Ashok Kumar. And I haven't seen him for many years now, but he, 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 he was very helpful to us and also invited us to his home. So actually, that's the first time that, that uh, either of us visited um, uh, somebody's own home in India. And we met his wife as a teacher. She was equally kind. And we also visited the Zoological Survey of India offices. And, and we met, uh, we were honoured to meet actually, Dr. Bishwas, Biswami Bishwas. And he let us look around the, uh, you know, the, the bird collections that they had. And some of the places we, we, we we birded then. Uh, I, th I think. Um, well, I I know really that they they've been in, industrialized now. One of them, where we had especially good a good uh, time, and we went there a couple of times, was at Grace Bridge, um, in southern Calcutta. And even then, I've got it's uh, it's becoming industrialized rapidly, becoming industrialized now. But it was very good. You know, in two or three hours, early morning, we had eighty species including two palace of fish eagles, um, 50 white rump vultures, uh, three Bramley kites, red-headed merlin, um, 26 grey-headed lapwings, 20 marsh sands, among, among a less sand plover, um, yellow bittern, um, oh, and this jacksnipe, I think that uh, we were pleased to see that. Um, also clamorous reed warblers, we had 10, and we had 10 of these striated grass birds too. And another place we, we, we went birding a couple of times was some marshy area in what is now called Salt Lake City. And that's all um, uh, built over now. But uh, another difference, major difference between our trips uh, in the early 1980s and, and our first trip was actually we didn't know anyone in India. We didn't have any contacts and we didn't have any friends there. And so different, so, so diff different from, from today. And, uh, you know, now, now we feel we've got many friends in India, which, which is really nice. I mean, just to name a few, uh, Bikram Guru, um, he was, was exceptionally hospitable to us in the 1990s. He let us stay at his home um, a few times then and couldn't have been more helpful, actually. Um, Dr. Asad Ramani uh, uh, had a friendship with him since the 1980s. Um, and uh, recently, um, Samantha Ghosh, uh, his wife, Pushpa, and their, their lovely family, um, Gunjan Aurora and, and uh, Bandana Mahindra 
who, who I met in 2019, all very kind, and, and many, many more people actually, that, that have really um, made our experience uh, a, a much richer one actually for, 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 failing, you know, for, for making friends with, 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 with people. Um, now where do we go to um, next after, after, after Bracebridge? Oh yes, there was one. There was one um, I could tell you about. Yes, <laughs> there was one incident. Actually, one day trip, um, which was certainly a very great experience. Uh, Dr. Bishwas had had a, a student, exceptionally exceptional student, actually field ornithologist, very very keen, called Sri Kumar but Chattopadhyay. He's he's. Sadly, he's he's passed away, but he did join us on on a few of our outings, and and one of them he he, he invited us to his own home, which was at uh, Budge Budge, uh, twenty kilometres out of the city. I've got down here. It took us an hour and a half on the bus to get there, but never mind. Uh, and uh, it was right out of the out of the city, on the edge of the city, forested swampland. I've called it. Um, with large pools. So Shikuma met us and uh, to my dismay uh, he started walking out through these large pools and so we, I, I remember struggling to follow him as he went at such a pace and um, it was ankle deep in mud and thigh deep in uh, water and I hardly saw any birds. Uh, I've got notes here that we had clamorous and thick filled warblers and two stork bill kingfishers. I remember the kingfishers, Pacific golden plovers, but I was far too much t spending all my time concentrating on not falling over and drowning my binoculars. And I, I do mention there were lots and lots of um, beautiful blue and black dragonflies glittering over the water. And when we eventually uh, we 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 uh, we came to a fisherman's hut and uh, a, a reed bed where we could where we got out of the water and and Shikuma then said that we had to be very careful because of dangerous snakes and he'd seen a crate. Well, fortunately, Tim and I didn't see it. And uh, but anyway, it 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 was a very um, it, it was a very memorable day out, and I didn't need my notebook. Uh, my, my my letters to my parents to remind myself about that day. I remember it so clearly. Well, we spent um, two and a half weeks actually in Calcutta, and and we were re relieved uh, to leave. We took the train again, overnight train uh, to new uh, to new Jalpaiguri. And and we were going to visit Calcutta. Uh, sorry, Darjeeling, and uh, I, I was really excited about that. Uh, but uh, we could have taken the bus from New Jalpaiguri up to Darjeeling, which is what Tim wanted to do. But I was very keen to take the famous toy train and the steam train, and it it took. It took uh, nine and a half hours, so four hours longer than usual, um, apparently, to cover the 65 miles. And I, I, I wrote down a few times, the engine was obviously failing to climb and there'd be an ominous shuddering and it came to stop. And, and we also stopped for long periods for, for no apparent reason at all. But anyway, eventually we did um, reach Darjeeling and we, we both loved it. And that was my first introduction to the Himalayas and Himalayan birds. And I fell in love with them straight away. It's the first time in my life I'd ever really felt in the mountains. Uh, we could see all the way from Darjeeling then, we could see all the way down to the plains, we could see Kanchenjunga in the distance. I've written here, there are no cars on the streets. And our first morning, our first morning, uh, we, we went to the botanical gardens. I expect they're still there and they're probably just 
just as lovely today, that they were filled with typical Himalayan plants and, and Himalayan birds. And the first Himalayan bird I saw was, was I remember clearly, was the white cut red start, water red start on the stream outside the gardens. And when we were inside, we saw these birds for the first time. Uh, I saw so many birds that later I felt, you know, we're, I feel now we're, we're all friends. There were flocks of babblers, that, like this beautiful red-tailed minnow. There was blue blue winged minnows, bar winged seavers. Um, there was three species of shrike babbler, I remember. This one, the white, white brown shrike babbler, green shrike babbler, red bill neothrix, um, scaly thrush, blue whistling thrush, black cap sibias. I, I mean, I, 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 I didn't need my, my notebook to remind me of, of, of that visit. I know these are all, you know, common birds, but they're all new. I saw them all new um, in the space of a couple of hours. Uh, Long-tailed minivet, mountain hawk eagle, rufous bullet niltarva, and, uh, you know, flocks of, of warblers, blithes crowned, ashy-throated, whistler's warbler. And this one, which, you know, this just delightful, which is my firm favorite, the chestnut crown warbler. I absolutely love it. Um, and, and, and there were others, but I guess it's a bit boring for me to just read out a list. Um, but but our, our, our most exciting uh, outing in Darjeeling undoubtedly was to go to Tiger Hill. And we took a Jeep to Goom and then we walked uh, up through some um, uh, up, up through some forest, actually, up to up to the tour a tourist bungalow. There was a tourist bungalow then, just one, uh, and we were the only people there. We spent the night there, and at uh, dawn the next morning, of course, we set off. And um, apart from it was amazing, of course, to see the dawn uh, sun on Sagamartha. But what was even more thrilling than that, of course, was all around, all, all Tiger Hill then, uh, I, I, there, was a, there was a very large broad-leaved oak forest, mossy forest uh, with, with epiphytes and lots of bamboo in the undergrowth. And I'd never seen a forest, I'd never seen a forest like that before. Um, and and uh, that that was that was thrilling. So uh, I'll just go back. So there was scimitar babbler. I remember seeing that one. We had laughing thrushes, chestnut uh, chestnut crowned, um, and we had golden bush robin, white browed bush robin, hoary throated bar wings. Uh, yeah, brown bullfinch. Uh, that's that's a nice bird, isn't it? Um, fifty. I've got here fifty striped throated juhinas, but the star, uh, of course, and would be today if I was to go there. Uh, I don't know if they're there still. You know the parrot bills, uh, but we saw a flock of um, thirty parrot bills in the bamboo there, and I was just so enchanted by them. This is the Eastern race, isn't it? And so, so, so that was a great, a great thrill, and we had fire tails sunbirds as well and in winter plumage uh, you know we have 15 of those yellow brow tits so the following day we went down to uh, we, we must have taken a bus I think uh, we went down to Kashyung and and Tim was keen to spend time at some subtropical forests at the base of, 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 of the mountains there at Sukna and the only place we could stay, he said, was um, a forest guest house. And we needed to get permission from the forest officer, uh, a forest officer to stay there. And so that meant that we had to visit Dow Hill. And there can't have been a bus, I suppose, because we walked from Kashyung um, up through the forest again, uh, up, to, up to Dow Hill. And um, that was from 4,860 feet up to 6,000 feet. And uh, again, we walked through Eldry Forest. And this is one of the birds we saw, ashy-throated warbler. And we had crimson-breasted woodpecker. 
Um, that's a lovely woodpecker, isn't it? And little pied flycatcher, thrilled to see that for the first time. Large Niltaba, another another lovely Himalayan bird, of course. And uh, my first ever fork tail, so thrilled to see that uh, with their swaying, swaying tails. And the forest officer was um, surprised to see us, very surprised to see us. Um, he gave us tea and we told him what we wanted to do. So he was happy to give us a, he was happy, you know, to give, to give us the permission. Gave, gave us the letter and he said how much he missed the birds from the city he missed house crows he said he, they used to wake him every morning well i was gobsmacked by that with all the wonderful birds he had around him he was missing house crows i remember that especially so anyway the next day uh we went down to um we went down to sukna uh, we took a car actually from Kashyung down to Sukhna. And there's a wonderful broadleaf subtropical forest there. I hope it's still there today. We had three fantastic birding days there. And at that time, there wasn't any, um, only very small paths or hardly any paths through the forest. Uh, and the only safe way you could go really without getting lost was to follow the riverbed. There was a small river and we followed it as far as we could till the uh, forest, it became a small stream. But the forest officers who met us there and showed us Bangla, they were, they were horrified we were going to walk in the forest and they tried to deter us, telling us there were lions, lions in the forest. And um, we, did we did actually hear a large animal one day and I, 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 I did feel pretty scared, but it turned out to be a cow. Um, so obviously there weren't, uh, there, there was obviously some, some people around too. Um, so, so one of the most exciting birds there was this, uh, was a rufous bellied eagle, this beautiful, beautiful bird of prey. And this I think is the most um, cutest uh, bird of prey I've ever seen. We had six of these, collared falconets. Um, and we 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 had lots lots of other other good birds actually. Um, another fork tail, black back fork tail. Uh, we had um, mustache parakeets, red breasted parakeets, fifty crested tree swifts, um, pied oriental pied hornbills, crested gozo, um, the, the, the the Asian fairy bluebird. Um, Abbot's Babbler, White Spectacled Warbler, um, but my one of my favourites was this one, the first time I ever seen, Sultan Tip, isn't it amazing? And uh, this beautiful uh, yellow vented warbler as well, I think one of the most lovely, perhaps the loveliest of the, of the philosopher's warblers. So every evening, I remember we were absolutely tired out and uh, we didn't take enough food with us. We sat, we had to buy our food to take and uh, we were absolutely ravenous. So <laughs> at the end of the trip, uh, we, we, uh, we ran out of food actually. Anyway, we, we took the train then to uh, New Jalpaguri um, from Sukhna. We took the toy train again. And it must have been after dark, because I mentioned I saw my first ever fireflies there, about 40 of them flashing brilliant spots from the train. And after that, we took the train to overnight train to Patna. I haven't time actually uh, to tell you about our visit to Patna, our uh, luck now, but we, we met some very helpful people there, uh, what Tim was doing. and. Uh, the last, the last thing we did in Delhi was uh, in India. Actually, the the, the uh, was the most exciting of all because we had three full days at Bharatpur, and rather foolishly, um, we decided to take the train to Bharatpur. Not we should have taken a bus, but 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 we took the train, and it was the overnight train to to Bombay. 
and we're in second class, of course. We hadn't bothered to book seats because it wasn't very far. That didn't matter. But more and more people were squashing in. I was totally dismayed. More and more people were pouring into the carriage. I was terrifically noisy. In those days, people carried, you know, huge bedrolls. So they had a lot of luggage. It was very noisy, these huge bedrolls. And we got more and more crammed together. And we set off. Is pitch dark, and I realised that we would have no idea. Um, we had no idea where we were, and by that time they'd locked the doors, and the last people who got on the train climbed in through the windows. Uh, so this time, I'm afraid I cracked up, and I started to cry. Um, and the people around us had ignored us completely to that point. Said to Tim, "Why? Why is why is she crying?" And um, Tim said, she thinks we can't get off the train. And uh, so they, they were really kind, actually, after squashing us. Um, and we weren't threatened or anything, but they just kind of ignored us. And, um, and their, their attitude changed altogether. And they asked where we were, where we were getting off. And when we told them it was Barrackpur, uh, they said, oh, it's all right. We'll tell you when we get there. And you can climb out of the window, which we did. And um, so they helped us out of the window at Barrapur, and sure enough, there was no sign. We wouldn't have known we would Barrapur or not. And we were the only people getting off the train. We jumped out of the window, and they handed us our rucksacks. And uh, so I, I remember that, you know, how, how kind the people were. Um, and as you can imagine, our visit to Barrapur was was amazing. There was um, many. Birds of prey. Then um, we had uh, we had five five red-headed vultures, uh, five palaces palaces fish eagles, fifty white rump vultures, twenty Egyptian vultures, two step eagles, uh, one Eastern imperial, and uh, fifteen great spotted eagle. And hundreds and hundreds of ducks. The most, the most common seemed to be pintail. There, were, there were so many; it was difficult to count actually. Um, but the most, the most common, yeah, but the most common was pintail. And the rarest one we had was we had a drake, uh, falcated duck. But there were no guides then at Barapur, no guides at all, and uh, and the guest house was full. Uh, apparently we had to book, we didn't know. And But they let us pitch our tent uh, on the lawn, I remember, in front of the guest house. So we just walked walked around, uh, you, you know, on our own. And I guess we, we probably missed missed quite a bit uh, by doing that because now, you know, they're local local guides and, and that would have been, that that's another, another difference between then and today. That, that that nowadays there are ex experienced, capable, you know, lo local guides, and, and we've been very more than happy to make use of them in recent years. But in those days, they 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 weren't there. Um, so what else did we see? Um, oh, six um, six what I call long billed vultures. It wasn't it wasn't split then. I suppose they probably uh, were Indian, what we call Indian vultures today. And uh, a large number of darters, 500 darters, um, 2,000 painted stocks, 20 woolly neck, five black neck, 300 open bill stalks. And of course, there was a lot more water. Uh, it was, you know, it was water everywhere. And um, it was a very good place to see uh, um, the eagle owl. I hope dusky eagle owl is still there. We saw three or perhaps four of them. Uh, so that was a great thrill. But the owls are my favorite, uh, favorite bird actually. And we had uh, brown fish owl, uh, both the dusky eagle owl and brown fish owl were new birds, but many, many warblers. Um, Blythe's reed, I've got here, clamorous, booted, lesser white throat, Hume's warbler, greenish warbler, But the the star, of course, of of and we didn't realize how how how, how lucky we were to see them. 
the, the star was the Siberian crane. Uh, there was a, a flock there, uh, 27, including three immatures. And we were very, very thrilled to, to see them, but uh, we had no idea then that, that, that you know, that they, they, they were threatened and, uh, and that the number would, would dwindle and, you know, no more return. Tim tells me that this year there's a bird in Iran, a bird from that Western population. Um, but still, it's very, very sad, isn't it? Um, so actually, I guess that's a sad, sad note to, to end on. But um, uh, I want to say thank you for listening and, and to say how much I really very much, uh, I, I still enjoy coming to India. And uh, yeah, and uh, if there's any questions, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. I'll just stop. I mean, I'll just stop sharing the screen now. Hi, Carol. That was Hi. so, so very fascinating. I mean, you're taking us down memory lane. It was so fascinating. So well, well, uh, we'll op we've opened the chat now for any questions people want to ask us. Please go ahead. So, Carol, tell us in all those trips to India, was there anything which was extra nice or extra frightening or extra something that you can remember? Well, I, 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 I've told you about the extra, extra nice things, you know, all the extra nice things I, uh, I, I mentioned there. I didn't talk about birding in Patna and look now because that was very good birding too. But for me, it was the introduction to the Himalayas. That for me was the, that for me was the, you know, was, what, 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 you know, was the best part. But I did, we did have an alarming experience, yes, in, in Lucknow. And here again, I was to blame. We met a snake charmer. We saw a group of people around a snake charmer. And I, I wanted to look. And Tim didn't want to. No, no, no. He said, leave that. I'm not interested in that. I said, oh, cool. let, let, let's watch. And, and so we did. And a small group of people there. And I, I'd never seen one before. And, and then he, the snake charmer, noticed us the only westerners and he he wanted some money from us fair enough you know but when tim got his money out um when tim got his money out you know he, he did we didn't have any small change and he saw these big notes that is a fatal mistake i would never do that again always make sure you got small change and keep your big money in a different place so when he saw this big money he just he wanted us to give it to to and Tim said, no, no, no. So the snake charmer, he wrapped the snake around Tim's neck and uh, which was, uh, everybody was very, 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 everybody else very amused. Well, any way Tim disentangled himself and we ran. We just ran as fast as we could. And uh, so we're out of breath and we looked round and there he was. He was still running after us, the snake charmer. He was shaking his fist and I didn't think I could run anymore, but we did have to do that. We ran and ran again. And uh, yes, 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 we, we got rid of him. And where we stopped, we were actually by a river. And uh, I do remember we saw our first long-billed plover there. So we have the snake charmer to thank for that, I guess. Um, Lovely, so <laughs> an introduction to India. Yeah, that was my introduction to India. Great, fantastic. Thank you so much. Now we take questions. Garima? Uh, yeah, Carol, there are quite a few questions uh, coming in. Uh, Ashish wants to know, uh, when did you first start thinking about the book? The, the field guide? Uh, well, that you read, uh, of course. All, all credit goes to Richard Grimmett, actually. It was him. He first thought, of course, we did. there was no field guide. Um, and so... Um, uh, actually, Ben King was writing a field guide, and so because he was such an expert, you know, and he'd written such a good book on birds of Southeast Asia, uh, because everybody thought, and that was going to be published by Collins, everybody thought that was coming, and uh, and then it t transpired that it didn't. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure what happened, and so there was this gap, you know, no book, and Richard Grimmett so said to us in, uh, that would be um 1990 1995 um 1995 yeah you know richard said to us 
you know what how about it you know let's let's do this you know let's do it together so it was his inspiration really um and at that time i tim and i'd already written a couple of books on nepal and so we went to that publisher christopher helm and uh, he agreed straight away but it took us four or five years actually uh or, or was it but yeah it must have been 94 it must have been 94 when we started and, and, and 98 98 when we finished yeah okay uh some more questions uh, how many species totally did you see on the whole visit and which was your favorite bird of the trip and, or and you, maybe you can and, say which were your favorite five birds five 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 birds you know, i knew you were going to ask me how many birds i've seen um because um i've uh, I, I I confess that I've um, at the end of the trip lit at the end of the trip you know we made a list a full list of everything you can understand I can't find it anywhere so to be honest I, I don't know if if Tim was here um, I, I I could ask him uh, I, I I think I think I think he might be listening um, if he can go into chat he might be able to tell you Barima if he's still there listening. Uh, sh shall we? Shall we? Yeah, Tim is there. Tim? Is he? Yeah, yeah Tim maybe, is there. Maybe, maybe Tim can. Uh, yeah, maybe can maybe I Tim know. can uh, tell uh, Garima. So favorite birds. I've already mentioned them actually. Um, dusky. We have Tim. We have Tim online also now. If you want to talk. To yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, I don't know if he knows or not. He much better idea than me. How many we saw? Uh, Tim, are you there? I am here. Yes. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, hi Tim. <laughs> hello. Hi. Um, hello, Carol. Right, I, I, I'm afraid I can't answer that question. I, I, I would be able to, but it would take me a while to, to find the, uh, the information. But, so it's just impossible, really, off the top of my head, I'm afraid. Sorry, sorry to put you in that position then. Anyway, um, I mean, we felt we saw a lot. Uh, but uh, favorite birds, dusky, um, dusky galal, I think, and uh, some of the Himalayan birds I've already mentioned. You know, I've sultan tit, yellow vented warbler, um, oh, and uh, chestnut crowned warbler, of course, and and the the red tailed minna. I chose those pictures because they were my favorite. Yeah, uh, actually, I have a question. So you were mentioning all the bird lists uh, that you uh, collected from your letters. Uh, so do you have these lists uh, into eBird now? Oh, I did. Yes, yes, I did. I did. Cross my heart, I did. Uh, last year, it was last year, 2019. End of 18, beginning of 19, I had a request. Uh, to put our earlier trips, you know, on. And uh, of course I was fascinated and uh, they, they weren't actually in the letters, they were in the notebook. Okay. notebook yeah. And, uh, and uh, so I actually put in uh, 1977, this trip, 1980, but I haven't, I haven't put, uh, uh, I think I put in 81 as well. And uh, you've put some in, Tim, haven't you? You put your first trip? Yes. yes, some of it anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so certainly all, 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 all of that, uh, you know, first trip. And when I was putting it into eBird, you know, when you get a message that says, uh, you know, this is unusual, a large number of birds, and and that was just coming up all the time, you know. Uh, it got a bit, a bit tiresome, I'd have to write, you know, of course, every time I put the vultures in, it would it would it would come up, and 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 for, and you know, and, and and for many other other species as well. Yeah. Uh, another question: uh, Which place would you like to go birding in India now, and why? Oh, which place would I like to go birding in now? I think I'd like to go. I haven't, you know. I confess that, apart from. Oh, actually, that was something else we did in the first trip. I didn't mention we went up to Sri Nagan, Kashmir, but it was the end of November, not a particularly good time. So that's the, my only time, really, apart from being in the foothills there at um, in Uttarakhand. I have I'd like to explore the Western Himalayas um, in uh, in Himachal and Uttarakhand up up in the 
temperate forest that I love so much and higher up in the subalpine. It'd be nice to go trekking there uh, while I can still do it. I still can, I still could now, but uh, maybe need to do it soon. Yeah. Uh, what, what piece of advice or tips would you give to amateur bird watchers? Oh, right. Um, well, when you're bird watching, I'm going to sound a bit like a preacher now. When you're bird watching, please, please put the interest of the bird first. Whatever, you know, try not to go too close. Um, if, it's, if it's breeding, please don't disturb it at the nest. And uh, I know I'm not a bird photographer, but I do know that uh, it's so tempting. Uh, I can understand wanting to always get a better picture. Uh, but, you know, you can cause such, such disturbance at, at the nest that can make to such an extent that the birds would desert, actually. So I would say enjoy the birds, enjoy the birds, watch them. Um, and if, you, if you're enjoying photography, of course, do, do photograph the birds, but try not to see everything with a square frame around it, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I've seen a number of photographers without any binoculars, so I wonder how much they're really watching. Um, that's the same in England too. And the other thing is, please, please, to limit, do be careful or preferably avoid altogether trying to locate birds with tapes um, because overuse, because the trouble is, it's not just you taping, it's, it's other people, they'll come after you and, and eventually the birds will ignore the tape and that, is, that disrupts their behavior. The birds sing for a reason. They sing to attract a mate um, and, and to defend the territory. You know, I guess we, we, we all know that. But if a bird, if a bird uh, uh, stops ignoring um, a competitor, you can imagine that has <coughs> on, its, on its breeding, breeding behavior. Yeah, thanks. And uh, actually Ashish gave a wonderful talk uh, as part of the Delhi Bird Talks as well on this about the old-fashioned way of bird watching. Oh, really? I really recommend oh, everyone to go and watch. Uh, on oh, I'll YouTube. have to. I'll have to watch that. I'll have to watch yeah. that. And there are there are actually quite a few requests from um, people who are attending to uh, see a peek into your notebook from those days. Is that to possible? actually see it? It's see inside yes. it. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, but it, I don't know if we'd be able to see it on the. Can you see? Can you see okay. it? There? Yeah, maybe a little further away if you could hold it. Is that it? So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, were you were you sketching uh, birds also, or not was that it just writing? No, not that trip. I didn't. But um, in 1981, I did. Um, and actually I did, uh, but I, I, I don't know why I didn't, uh, it was the only trip, trip I did actually, I, I, actually. Oh, in, in 1980 I did too, um, I, I don't know why I gave up because I think it is very useful, um, you know, to sketch the bird, a new bird or a bird you're not sure what it is and mark, you know, the, yeah. mark the features, you know, especially if you can't mm -hmm. photograph it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one question. Um... Ramji, who says, I'm a teacher who has failed miserably to get my students take to birding. Any uh, tips to get it going? Any tips to get them going? Well, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think you've got to make sure they enjoy it, you know, um, and maybe even bribe them along with some cookies and uh, something, you know, like that. Um, and uh, if, if if, if they're not that enthusiastic, um, you could maybe do something else at the same time. If they're boys, you know, maybe they could play football as well. Um, so uh, <laughs> football and birding, or, or or you can give them, I don't know what they might like to eat and drink, you know, as a, a like a picnic, a treat, just, and just to um, to make sure they, they have an enjoyable day and they've enjoyed the day. And, you know, you can see birds, birds at the same time. So your teacher say, oh, you know, how long, you know, um, yes, yeah. that, that, that's how I would try. Okay, thanks. Uh, and I did want to mention that uh, 
uh, you know, Carol is the one who's been really helpful in uh, getting us uh, to produce these series of pocket guides for uh, amateur birders. And thank you so much for that, Carol. I mean, that well, really, think... really helped so many beginners to take to birding. Well, yeah, thanks for mentioning it. I'm delighted. Delighted to help, of course. Thank you. Uh, and then maybe one last question. Um, a few people have asked, uh, when you visit uh, India now, compared to when you used to uh, in the 70s and 80s, do you feel yeah. that there's been a big change? And could you comment on that? Well, yes. I mean, there, there is there is there is a big change. I mean, um, my, you know, my eBird entries brought that home to me, um, really. And and later visits, you know, I mentioned one bird not seeing the Indian rollers, but I mean, there are there are far fewer birds. I mean, I think that sadly is true. But that's not just in India, is it? There are far fewer birds in the UK, and indeed in not all, but many, 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 many countries in in the world, um, they are that they, you know they're far, far fewer de uh, birds. But you know, on 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 the positive side, uh, in those days there wasn't an interest, except by very few. Like I mentioned, Ash Ashok Kumar who was ahead of his time. Really, uh, they were they were relatively small, no, a small number of, of people. Uh, in India then who were keen on, on conservation who understood about conservation in 1977 and now uh, I should think you know most 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 bird watchers understand the need for conservation so that is a very positive uh, change and I've already mentioned guides now now if you go to the national parks or you know places like Barapa you know the, 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 there are local uh, enthusiastic uh, knowledgeable, very good bird guides, and and uh, you know all 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 Indian nationals, and 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 they virtually didn't did, didn't exist before, so so there are you know there are, there are, there are and uh, the conservation movement, uh, despite despite its weaknesses, you know it's it's it, it's 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 obviously much better much better protected area system much better than it was in 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 those early days so i mean i, I mean in, in, in you know it's, it's one of the reasons i you know i you know i love to come back because uh, wildlife and birds they're just part of the indian culture and tradition and and and, and that's uh, you know that that's where why they're so tame in, in, in most places we go. And, and that's why it's so nice to come back. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your memories. And I hope that we'll get to see you and Tim in India, uh, you know, soon, once. Uh, as soon as we're in that. So let's ask Tim. Yeah. So let's uh, let's ask Tim if he has any fond memories of his trip to India in 1977, Tim. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tim. I was wondering if you have anything interesting you want to share with us from your trip to India in 1977, or around that time. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm not really prepared for this, uh, <clears throat> but uh, I think Carol has covered uh, all of the the main point. <clears throat> The main points of that trip so um, and we, we both really enjoyed just seeing so many different places in India that was one of the things that some of those places I've not not been back to and I'd really really like to go back well I mean Kashmir was one where we just had a couple of days in the in the winter and so only saw a very small number of species <clears throat> and that would be, be wonderful to to be able to go back there again but not so easy now um, mm, can't, I can't really think of anything else to, to say at this stage. Right. You could tell us about some one of the experiences you had in your first trip, Tim. Like, oh, you know, when you lost your binoculars. <laughs> you lost your binoculars. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there were so many inc incidences on my first trip that are be good to talk about, but no time. Um, but that that one that Carol reminds me, yes, yeah, so I was uh, that that time we I drove 
with, with five other friends. We drove over land from, from the UK to India. Um, and we, we spent quite a bit of time in Nepal, but we, we also went east as far as uh, Kazaranga in, a, in Assam. Um, and I remember that we, we, we stopped on the road somewhere in Assam <coughs> for lunch, just by the side of the road. And uh, when we set off again, I'd obviously left my binoculars on the, on the front or on the side of the, of the, the van we were traveling in. Um, after we'd gone about an hour, I realized I hadn't got them. So we went back and it was just somewhere by the side of the road. So there weren't any, any real features to determine exactly where we'd been, but we managed to find what we thought was a spot. And of course there was no sign of the binoculars, but um, walked across to a few small houses across a field and somebody there handed me a, um, a vehicle number on a piece of paper. It's quite extraordinary that, uh, you know, no reason why they should have uh, kept this piece of paper. And so we went back to the, and they pointed down the road um, the way we'd, the way we'd uh, come back from. So we, we got back in and, and drove rather hopelessly in, in that direction for some way. And then noticed a truck going the other direction with, with, that, num with that number. So we waved and we stopped and um, he handed, handed over my binoculars, which are um, just quite amazing that um, he, he was a, a Sikh driver. So um, I guess uh, he just w wanted to return them back to the, the owner. So if I, if I hadn't got them, that would have made an awful lot of difference to the rest of my trip because then binoculars were a real rarity in India and you couldn't you certainly couldn't buy them and even borrowing a, a pair would have been impossible so I was very grateful for that that man okay okay thanks. thank you Tim. that was so fascinating to hear the story and thank you Carol for your lovely account taking us back down memory lane it was fantastic and thank you from the whole team and yeah. thank you everybody for logging in and till next weekend we'll see you again all right have a thank good day you. bye, bye, -bye thank you bye bye bye, bye. 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 bye.